Give us a shout if you can't hear me properly. How close does it want to be to me? Go with this. You got any idea? I'm, I'm, my heart's pumping through me. <laughs> I'm not going through my shirt, that is. Right, fantastic talks, as Paul's already said. Brilliant from everybody. Sarah, you will sure remain nameless for that. And um, Chuck stage, brilliant stuff. Um, I got a migraine last night for the first time in five years. I've had two and a half hours sleep. So I'd have to excuse me because I look bollocks. Um, I've cured them, but I'm thinking I'm getting zapped in my house for uncovering stuff. Anyway, that's another story. Um, and so what I did is, when, when I was listening to the three previous talks, um, I was making mental notes of um, certain things that you've said about the oxytocin and all that stuff. And really, um, this talk I'm doing now is really no different. In fact, when you, when you sit and analyse it and watch the videos, we're all really saying the same thing, but coming from different areas. And stuff that Sarah raised and this anonymous lady here, and uh, Truth Juice Dave, the stuff they were talking about is is really what I've incorporated by this concept of the People's Mandate. So, so my main presentation today is the People's Mandate, but I just want to show you this, which is only eight slides long, okay? So, uh, from, maybe said it face, then. Um, from the title, uh, okay, this is something, um, just going back to Truth Juice Day's talk, um, I, I agree with absolutely everything Truth Juice Day um, has researched, he's, he's a great friend of mine. You all look really happy and smiling when I put them on. When I take them off, you all look really miserable. I'll take them off for a minute. Rose tinted glasses again. Yeah. Um, there you live, isn't it? It's that one. Just checking everybody out, making sure there's no, no, there's no aliens. <laughs> yeah, Choo Choo Stage is brilliant. It's a great mate of mine. What he's saying is fantastic. Um, but, I don't know, 100 people here today. How many are going to send the documents back? How many? I sent my, I must have been first one, I sent me... Um, Driving license, passport, uh, birth certificate. I sent it back six years ago now. I've been driving around for six, sorry, travelling. Uh, I've been travelling around for six years without a license. Without a license. Uh, but how many out of these 100 people are going to do that? It's, it's quite a scary thing to do, isn't it? To send all your ID back and stuff like that. So people that we've got, Kate, a guy who's done something similar. And like I said, Truth Juice Dave and a few others, not just like me. But it's not for everyone to do, is it? So everything Dave has said and the other researchers, whatever they're saying is right. But it's not for everyone. It's, it's difficult to stick your head above that parapet in it and draw attention to yourself. So the people's mandate, for me, there is no other solution. This, this in effect, is saying the same thing. But this is done collectively. Now, there are other groups like this. Um, oh, I'm not mentioning for the video, but there's different groups all over the world doing stuff where you join. There's a membership or it's a group or it's an organisation. But under terrorism, terrorism laws, any group or organisation, um, association, can be closed down under terrorism laws. Uh, this is before I just get onto this, I'm just telling you about the mandate. Uh, and the people's mandate is different because it sounds like a contradiction, like a, a paradox, but it's, um, it's the individual, it's the power of one collectively. So it sounds like um, a paradox, isn't it? an oxymoron, but it's not. Everybody who uh, wants, the mandate's not written yet fully, but what I'm going to do tonight is go through the concept and there's a, what's called a preamble. I'll explain it all in a bit. Whoever, put, uh, whoever, whoever adds their common name, now this is a common name to the mandate, no, no Mr. John Smith and Mrs. Shirley Crabtree, nothing, nothing like that, it's just a common name, no addresses, that's their system, legal system, no postcodes, nothing like that, all it is is a common name, a geographical landmass, so for me, um, it would be Rob Freeman, geographical landmass Sheffield, geogra geographical landmass known as England, that's it. That's my name on the mandate. So what we're doing is, we're recognising that there is a system in place. Um, people like Dave and everybody are, are saying, uh, we don't want to be part of that system, we can't be, you want to walk away. This is where, this is slightly different because, everyone says to me, oh you've, you've done great because I don't pay for anything apart from my mortgage, I don't pay for anything else. And I've not quite cracked it, but I will do. And then I don't pay for anything apart from food. And everyone says, oh you've beat the system, well done. No, 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 I've not beat the system. It's not the system we're fighting, it's the ones running the system. Uh, and every single one of them are our servants, they're our public servants, they work for us. And what they've done is they've shoved it round on its arse, they've turned it opposite way around. And they're making us serve them. They're making us pay to live. We don't, we don't have to pay to exist to live. Everyone's got the, everyone's got the right to life. And they're making us pay for it. So what's happened is their egos have gone... I don't like swearing, but I do it quite often. I'm good at it. <laughs> their egos have gone fucking massive and instead of serving us, they've got that much money, power and control. 
the, we, the master's become the servant, and that's it. That we've become the servant. They don't have to take that position up um, to be a public servant, a public official. That includes judges, politicians, cops, whatever they are. They chose that, and in that capacity, then they are our servants. But when they take their stupid fucking costumes and badges and mm. uniforms off, then they're back to being the people like us. So that's the point is, we're not, it's not the system that we're fighting. All right, it's too complex to want scaling down. But the infrastructure's in place. There is a system. Uh, so it's not the system that we want to fight. It's those that, that are running the system and are pressing us, okay? So if we can just keep the mindset that it's not the system that we're fighting, it's the ones that we've entrusted. It's all about trust. I think it was mentioned earlier. We're entrusting these people to do the best for us, and they're not. They're just having his pants down. So that's basically what the mandate's all about. Obviously, a bit more technical than that. So before I get on to this, and I don't know anybody else who's come up with this, some of you may have, um, basic concept for this mandate, I started looking at different stuff, and I realised what's really happening. Okay, I'm going to put my specs on for this. So I've got the press laptop. Oh, good, I'm here. Okay, so this is how we are being enslaved and controlled, okay? Something I came across called tacit, <coughs> tacit procuration, and they need to say no. Okay, next slide, let's have a look. Oh, I've done it. Okay, so I start. This is how I, I uh, develop the concept for the people's mandate. Okay, procuration, procuration. Um, the act of appointing someone as an agent or attorney, in fact. Okay, so straight away it mentions attorney. So I start to think of power of attorney. Okay, and that's actually I don't know where that's from. Um, another uh, another definition: the authority vested in a person so appointed, um, the function of an attorney. So I started thinking, hmm, power of attorney. If someone's got power of attorney over you, they can do what they want. But I thought, well, don't you have to sign power of attorney over to someone? And this, this covers um, the child snatching by the sna uh, snake. Child snakes, you know what I mean, don't you? That, that, they all snakes, then, don't they? Yeah, snakes nicking kids. Um, everything, all the, all the debts, the alleged debts that we know are unlawful, uh, all the... I know people that go into court and they get just get shafted. I've done it myself loads of times. They just get steamrolled, don't they? Why? Why is all this happening? Why are we just barely surviving and we're paying through the nose massively just for the right to exist? And it's down to this that we're giving away power of attorney. Now I thought you had to sign over power of attorney. This is only eight slides long, and what we're going to realise is that tacit procuration is power of attorney. That's what we're giving away. Okay, so, so a few more definitions before I get to um, people's mandate. Well, where do we get to? Oh, another, another, another definition is procurement. That's, that's from Black's Law. Uh, procuration, the act of procuring and procurement. So procurement, procuration, same thing. Get this, the management of another's affairs. Okay, it's starting to make a bit of sense now. Um, third definition from this one. The instrument by which a person is empowered to transact the affairs of another, a proxy. Okay, it'll become apparent in a minute. Well, I hope it will. So what does procuration mean? Uh, other meanings? Not subject to legal constraint of another, unconstrained, having power to follow the dictates of his own will, his own will. Not subject to the domination of another, confined to the person, person, that's a horrible word again, confined to the person possessing instead of being shared with others. Now we come to the crux of what I'm trying to get to. Procuration, okay, not compelled to involuntary servitude, used in this sense as opposed to, well, that's the word, isn't it? Did somebody say something? No? Anybody say No? I've got voices in my head, I thought I heard somebody say something. <laughs> it's that my brain, you know, it's not, isn't it? Yeah, so, operative word, that's what's happening, okay? I've been saying for years now, and six years ago, five years ago, everyone used to laugh at me at one time, and I said, we're at war, they've, they've, um, they've waged, they're waging war on us. Uh, if it, oh, thanks, mate. If I pull the thing away, just give us a bollocking, right? Yeah, but then it gets too close, <laughs> <laughs> Where were I? Oh yeah, I've been saying for years that um, they w they've waged war on us, so when the baby comes out, they call it an emerge, for instance. It's stood in a hospital ward, and it's an emergency. That's why it's so, there's so much trauma and so, I don't know why I'm pointing to you, Sarah, I just that. Um, that's why there's so much trauma and stress at a birth, because um, it's, an, it's an emergency, that's why they take the baby away and do all those horrible things that we spoke about earlier. So we're at war, they wage war on us. That's why you go to work for your wages, so that you can pay a tax, a tax, or is it a double T, A-C-K-S, a tax. 
Every bit, they want you to work to fund the war that's happening. But the real war is a psychological war for us. That's what's happening for our hearts, minds and souls and that of our children. So we're at war. And so, another definition is of procuration, not engaged in a war as belligerent or ally, neutral. Okay. If you've got procurement, you can stay neutral during a war. Now, they've waged war on us. It's actually a holy war, which I'm going to go into a little bit more. It's an ecclesiastical holy war. It's the, um, the knights, the uh, holy war centuries ago when they went to the Middle East. It's never, the Templars. Crusades, Templars, it's never stopped. It's still happening now. That's why we're civilians during a war. That's why we receive posts through our doors. Um, your postcode is a militarised um, militarized zone, basically. Okay, so what I'm getting at is that they have waged war on us. Sounds bollocks, but 15, 20 minutes research, and I promise you, you'll get it. Yes, yeah, so that's that. Um, nearly done on this, and then we'll go to mandate. Oh, a bit more. Not despotic. Assuring liberty. Defending individual rights. This is all what procuration means. Uh, individual rights against encroachment by any person or class. Instituted by free people. Set of governments. And that's from Webster. So there's all different dictionaries. <coughs> nearly done on this bit. Uh, procurement, which is the same as procuration. The act of getting or obtaining something, uh, or of bringing something about, also termed procuration. Mm, the act of persuading or inviting another, excuse me, especially a woman or a child, to have illicit sexual intercourse. That's to procure. Mm. So lots of connotations and meanings. Okay. Procuration. If we have procuration, we, we are not under sub subject to anybody, anybody else's will. Okay, tacit procuration means that we give it away. We, gave, we give it away by our silence. That's what tacit is, like a tacit agreement. Okay. We want to be independent. This is what people's mandate is going to do. Okay, what is independent? Not dependent on, any, on anybody else. Not subject to control, restriction, modification, or limitation from a given outside source. That's where we want to be. This is where we are, okay? Um, dependent, we're dependent, we know it's a nanny state and we've got big brother and we're dependent on them for everything because we've given our trust away and that's what they're abusing. Um, so independent, uh, in relation to the legal definition of procuration, so procuration can be, um, we're dependent on an agency, a proxy, somebody doing it for us, they do everything for us and we do nothing for ourselves, so we've become totally dependent. Uh, the act of constituting another one's attorney, in fact I'll leave that bit. Um, the act by which one person gives power to another to act in his place as he could do in some way. That's, that's a bit I want to get to, that's why it's in red. The act by which one person gives power to another to act in his place as he could do himself. And that's exactly what we do in every single facet of our life. Everything, not just financially, everything. <clears throat> you seem to be dragging on to say it's eight slides, is not it? Um, so if you're independent, uh, action under a power of attorney or other constitution of agency. Okay, so they don't call it power of attorney. It comes under that. Oh, I've just blinded myself. Um, an express procuration is one made by the express written consent of the parties. So there is a written power of attorney, but it doesn't have to, you don't have to give away power of attorney by expressing it. You can do it tacitly. Um, an implied or tacit procuration takes place, this is the crux of the whole thing now, an implied or tacit procuration takes place when an individual sees another managing his affairs and does not interfere to prevent it. That's exactly yeah. what we're doing every day of our lives. Yeah. So we're giving power of attorney away. Once you're given power of attorney away, it doesn't matter what we say to the other side, that's why they ignore us in court. Yeah. That's why coppers... Um, yeah. You tell a copper that I'm, I'm travelling, I'm, I'm not driving, I'm travelling, I'm in my carriage, and I'm, and I'm, I'm uh, blobs of the family, snot, or whatever it is, he's not interested, is he? Yeah. And then you go to court, and you do all your work, and you're nervous, and you go in, uh, and you claim common law jurisdiction, and I do this, and I'm not a legal fiction, and well, if you're not a legal fiction, then you shouldn't even be in the fucking place in the first place, and that's why they ignore us. And I keep thinking, well, I'll become apparent in a bit why they do ignore us as well. But the reason um, they can ignore us, and they're not actually, believe it or not, they're not actually doing anything wrong, because we've given power of attorney away, um, and you'll see why in a sec. Uh, have I read this book, one? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Not so important. Procurations are also divided into those which con contain absolute power or general authority and those which give only limited power. That's from Black's Law. So you can give away tacit procuration, which is power of attorney, just in uh, limited areas. 
So for instance, you give it to your bank. Um, it doesn't mean they've got power of attorney over everything, every aspect of your life, but they've certainly got it in that financial matter for, the, for that particular account. Does any of this make it, even making sense? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? <coughs> okay. It's about done this. Um, so consent is consent, operative word, is given by us tacitly. Uh, so consent to everything is given inadvertently by us by giving away procuration tacitly by our silence. Okay, we don't say anything. So everything works on presumptions and assumptions. We don't say anything, so obviously we're agreeing. If I keep, um, if I keep saying to this chap here, like, you owe me five grand, you owe me five grand, you owe me five grand, and he never says a word, and it goes on for years and years, there's a good fucking chance he owes me five grand, isn't he? But he's not said out, has he? No, but it's true. And they're saying, they're saying you've given us power of attorney, we're going to do what we want, we're going to do what we want, we're going to do what we want, and then we don't say anything, do we? Who, who, who is it to blame? We didn't know, but now we know. So now there's no excuse, because we can do something, and that's the people's money that I'm coming to. Um, we get to here. Yeah. Uh, this gives the controllers power, power of attorney to act on our behalf in every aspect of our lives. This includes acting out as our fiduciary agents, which is your finances. Uh, the people's mandate, I put will, not can. I put will, because um, it is our will. The people's mandate will stop all this in one fell swoop. It is coming. It is inevitable. It's unstoppable. You might think I'm a dreamer, I am. I used to sit there at school like that. Everybody was doing the work and I'd be looking out the window like that. Dreaming of playing, winning, you know, scoring winning goal for Italy or something in football. Uh, but I think it's dreamers, and I think we're all dreamers a little bit. Without that initial dream, we're never going to get anywhere, are we? We just can be part of flipping mob and we don't want to do that. So nothing wrong with being a dreamer. And that's the end. It's not the end of the whole thing, that's the end of that. <laughs> okay, so that was just a little introduction because um, this is how I came across the concept. Um, of the people's mandate, thank you. <coughs> As you can see, I'm really technically minded. <coughs> Earlier on, we were talking about um, orgasms and bumwall twitching and all sorts. Aren't they? That's, that's why it's still going really fast. I'm just going to breathe. Cheers, Alex. Right. Okay, so this is where I come, um, I came to this. Uh, that initial stuff I found with Plano three or four months ago, when I first helped by our governor, Paul G, I first came up with this concept called the People's Mandate. Um, I was watching a, a video, a Max Egan video, and it was quite a long video, and just in passing, he said, because um, he's great, he's great, Max Egan, got a bit buzz eyed um, and he said if the people could um, sort of, um, dem um, what did he say, demand or mandate the will against public servants, we could, we could all do something. And he just carried on talking, I thought, it's not if, why can't we? We can't. There's nothing stopping us. There's nothing stopping any of us taking back power of attorney and taking it back um, and controlling every aspect of our life. It's a learning process for us because we've never done it, but there's nothing, absolutely nothing that can stop us doing it, only us. And hopefully by the end of this, you may or may not agree, but so far, um, people have started criticising already this people's mandate because there is a site, which it's on the end. Uh, and they start criticising something that's not written yet, because I've not actually written it yet, and I'm getting um, some help from some great people to write it. And it wants writing correctly, but it wants writing in simple form. The problem I've got writing the People's Mandate um, is that it's becoming really, really complicated, because we're trying to cover everything. So what I'm, the art, and it is an art form, and what, I've, what I'm trying to do is I keep backtracking and erasing it, and trying to put... Um, put I did that. Um, where were I? Oh yeah, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to cover the same amount of information on, and what our demands are, but in a much simpler for, form for everybody to understand. So we want to be reading the page of the mandate and saying, oh yeah, I get that. That makes sense. Oh yeah, I get that. What we don't want to be doing is analysing every word, looking at legalese, looking at Masonic language or commercial and all that bollocks. It's all bollocks. When I do read it out, every single word on that mandate is. I mean, Dave don't like Dave. Touch was Dave don't like the word people. Well, I don't care about what language they're using. I don't care about the legalese. I don't care whatever they want to call us persons, driving people. I don't care. It's our intent on our words, and we're telling them. This is our intent. We're the people. We're the real energy and currency in this in this country. England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. It's all same in every country. That's why they have to trick us and take power of attorney away. So by the end of this, you'll realise it's our words. 
it, they can't interpret it any other way and we're not interested. It says what we mean, it means what we say, okay. So this is the people's mandate where I come from. Um, <coughs> can't to freedom, okay. And this is how I came, this is how I sort of came to this with that tacit procuration and other stuff. Yeah, I've got some stuff about law um, that's really interesting. I noticed they were talking about um, obviously this statute law and the stuff, um, you know, your legislation. But there's all sorts of law, commercial law, and and we all say, oh, it's common law, common law. And then Dave showed us earlier that well, common law is not good; it's royal law. And like I say, he's a great mate of mine, but I don't, we don't agree on everything. And I, my opinion, even royal law is bollocks up to a certain extent. And to be honest. Well, I'm not saying it now, but I'll tell you in a bit. You might think I'm off me not, but there is no such thing as law. Um, apart from universal law, you can call it God. If you, if, you, if you believe in a God or creator, that's the only law there is. All this other stuff, including common law, is absolute bollocks. It's a fiction created in a man's mind in order to control so they can steal off others, and that includes common law, but I'll cover that in a bit. Okay, so this is how I came about this. Um, Equality of the human family. Okay, I'm not bothered what interpretation of words the others want to use. It's what we want, what we're saying. As far as I'm concerned, we're humans. All right, we can call each other mankind, man and woman. I don't care. We all know what we mean. If I said we're all humans, we all understand it. So about to rest. That's what we're saying. We're human. We're a family. I feel like you lot. In fact, I could snog you all. To be honest, really good. To be. All apart from them two at bite, we're really dodgy. But apart from you, I'd snog everybody else. Definitely. Uh, but we're all brothers and sisters, aren't we? I think. <laughs> Do you know, only, only one of you that's not my brother is actually my brother. He's the only one that doesn't look like me. Everybody else doesn't look like me. Okay, so we're all one family. Uh, and this is in reference to the first sentence in the preamble of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948. Okay, this is a preamble. It's the first sentence and it says, pretty much, pretty much sums it up for me. It says, whereas recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. Okay, and I found that out and I thought, in fact, my mate, my great mate Rob B um, sent that to me, and I thought, well, that's absolutely fantastic, because that sums up what the mandate's going to be all about. Okay, and then I thought, right, if we're going to write a mandate, what do we do? Um, all these other groups, I'll just have a swig of water. I'm getting into it now, I'm starting to buzz a bit now. Uh, all these other groups, um, uh, um, blah, blah, blah. We're going to foreclose this business and all these corporations and all these banks and great stuff and I'm not looking at anyone, it's fantastic what everyone's trying worldwide, globally, in this country and everywhere. But I can't see any successes yet. Um, and the reason I can't see any successes is you can't steam in and just accuse somebody of committing fraud, even though we know they're committing fraud. They're, they're breaking any law imaginable, but they're not doing right by us. And we know that, but if you corner a rat, uh, I used to have a, when I was a little kid, um, <coughs> My history teacher at school used to be a professional boxer and he, and he taught me how to box. He said, Rob, if ever you're having a fight, he says, always give them a, a way out. He says, tell them you're in the bathroom, give them a way out. And he says, nine out of ten times they'll take it. And I thought, well, yeah, he's right. If you corner a rat and he's got nowhere to go, he's just going to jump up and attack you, isn't it? Okay, so if we start just steaming in and, and um, accusing our public servants, our public servants, judges, cops, whatever, um, of committing fraud, what are they going to do? They're either going to ignore us, aren't they, or they're going to attack and fight back, and they've got all weapons, they've got all manpower and weapons. We've got to be careful. So I thought, well, how can we let them know that we're coming for them, that we've fucking had enough, we've had it up to here, we've had enough. This is the year for us, I'm telling you, we've had enough now. We want to, we've, time for talking is gone now. We all know enough now to know that we're being shafted um, in every aspect of our lives on a daily basis, aren't we? And it's getting worse and worse and worse. I read that on a cornflakes packet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat cornflakes. Frost, frosties. <laughs> yeah, frosties are going to buzz off from sugar buzz. Well, I'll throw that off now. Oh, well, and so, um, where were we before frosties? It's because I've had a migraine, I seem to be forgetting things. Forget oh, frosties. Corn rats. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Oh, thanks, Bob. So, if you corner a rat, it's going to attack or whatever. So, you give it a way out. So, instead of steaming in and accusing them of fraud, Okay, I'll look what a preamble was from that. Let's have a look what a preamble is. Okay, a preamble is an in introduction, um, an introduction, sorry, to a main document, such as the preamble to the Constitution. Uh, when, when writing the preamble, preamble, keeps going off this. 
When writing the preamble, uh, it's best to write a small summary of what will be what will be included in the main document. It's not me. It's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's good to submit them. All right. Uh, in addition to being a summary of the document to follow, ooh, it should be an explanation of the purpose of the document. So this is what a preamble is. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say before this is going into Mitten is before we serve the people's mandate, we serve a preamble. Um, thus, we've cornered right and we're saying, look, or we've cornered somebody and said, look, I'm going to batter you, but that's your way out. So that's what we're kind of saying with preamble. Okay. Uh, the preamble does not need to be long to be effective, usually about a paragraph or two. This is a bit longer than a paragraph or two. So you get what I'm saying. You can. So this is the idea behind the preamble. With the preamble's written in draft form at the moment, excuse me, but the full mandate's not written yet. Okay, so how did I arrive at this? Consent is presumed. Consent is presumed. And this is a quote, but I can't remember where I got it from. Um, if dissent is not made known, then consent is presumed by law. Okay, so if you don't dissent, you've got two options. You can either dissent, if, if you don't dissent, then you must be consented, and that's how they see it. This is what I mean about tacit procuration. Um, <coughs> all government officials and departments work for us, the people. All corporations, stroke, commercial enterprises are below the status of we, the people, i.e. man and woman. Okay, and these big CEOs, everything's, everything's reversed around, everything's arse, arse over tip. The ones that we think have got the power are important. It's, they're working for us. Even big C, um, CEOs of major corporations, bollocks, they're engaging in commerce, right? We the people come first, okay? In that capacity, everybody's beneath us in status until they decide not to be doing those hours and they become we the people again. Um, they all provide goods and services and or services. Uh, that, this means that in, in that capacity, they are our servants, okay? Every corporation, uh, every employee, right up to anything you can imagine, they're our servants, okay? They work for us. They work for the commonwealth of us. It's up to us. They make a profit after they've supplied goods and services, done it correctly. Um, they always talk about fucking price, don't they? Oh, prices always go up. They never talk about value. That's the difference. We've entrusted them and they never talk about value. It wants to be a value exchange. Otherwise, they can just keep hiking prices up. What's a price? Some of, it's a construct again, and that's why they do keep hiking prices up. You know, is it fair for is it fair for a pensioner to not be able to eat food because she can't afford her eating and she's sat in front of a thing with a blanket round eating one meal a day? No, it's not fair. What 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 price is fair on that? There is no price on that, is it? It's like, it's a it's a it's a exchange of energy, isn't it? It has to be right and fair, okay? As you all know. So this is what led me to what I was saying about law. If any of this don't make sense, just say, wait, it's crap, go over it again, and I'll go over it again. So all law is a fiction too. This is where, this is how I arrived at doing the mandate. Now, I don't want us all to be criminals, or proper criminals, but it'd be, it'd be great if we could leave today and do a little bit of your own due diligence, and have a look at your own things, and look at what law actually is, because we're all trying to find a remedy within law. Um, I'll just digress a little bit. These clever bar stewards who have run and everything, they've created this statute law which is consent only. Uh, and if we say nothing, we're consenting, but we've all come and we thought, hang on, we've had some great results. Uh, we don't consent. So what happens is, well, what's our options? All right, we'll have a look at common law then, law of the land. It's so clever, common law is still a mental construct and it only pertains to the land that, that you stood on. For instance, for instance, people in England can't do the same stuff as people in Australia or Africa, or flipping somewhere else. So, the law of the land is only, only pertains to that particular geographical area, not to it. So it has to be a construct. It can't be anything else. Okay, so all law is a fiction too. How did I, how did I get to that? Okay, apart from the laws of um, universe, nature, God, so you can call them natural laws, universal laws, um, or God, and it's entirely up to you what you want to believe or what you want to uh, say. But that, that's it, they're the laws coming from the universe or wherever, creator or whatever, yeah? Um, all so-called so -called law is just interpretation of words. And if you can't remember anything else, um, you don't take anything else from this talk today, anything, just remember that. All law, so-called law that we call law, is nothing but interpretation of words. That's all it is. That's all it ever can be. Artists, artists and statues are given full force of the law. By? By the, by, by the establishment.
by these just, just say that again for so I don't know. Yeah. Acts and statutes are given, which are given to us, have been given the full force of is it the people who controls the people the, the government? Being given by who? Okay, yeah, just just on this thread, hang on. Being given being given the full hang on a sec. Being given full force by who? Us. The the right, everything comes back to us, we the people, yeah. 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 It only, it's, only, it's not law, it's got the force of law by us giving energy transfer, not not uh, price again. We put our energy into it, yeah, and we consent. Now, we consent because of fear, intimidation, because yeah. we're scared, or we're uh, tricked and deceived. But then we, it's that energy transfer I was telling you about, it becomes law, yeah, because we've consented to it. It was yeah. created, sorry, it was created by the creation of Parliament. Yeah. When your MP okay, you just said the word. Who was it created by? Uh, there you go. It's a fiction. A man's mind created again. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so what I'm saying is, um, when you, if, if if we consent to it, we're saying it's all right to do it, aren't we? Yeah. We're telling everybody. Yeah. Okay. So all law is interpretation of wor uh, words. That's it. That's all it ever can be. That's why you go to a hearing, and we say our words, and they completely ignore us and they interpret the words differently. Yeah. And they interpret it that way. So if I ask, they say, Rob Freeman, do you understand? And I say, yeah, I understand. Thank you very much. Tough shit. You know what I mean? What are you doing driving without a license? Well, uh, I thought I could drive without a license. Oh, you're driving, eh? He engages in commerce, bye. And it's just his interpretation of words, isn't it? So if they can do it, why can't we do it? Because remember, who do they work for? They work for us. They're just interpreting the words differently to what is the intent. Their intent on the words is different to ours. Now, now we recognise that. Why, why can't we stamp our own intent on our own words? They're our servants. Make them, um, make, make them listen to our words and our intent. It's all about intent, okay? So we're not doing it through trickery and two things, honour and dishonour. We're yeah. going to remain in honour. <coughs> They're doing it dishonourably. Mm -hmm. And that's why at the back of all this, and I know my great friend um, Satya understands it, and I spoke to... Um, the legend that is still on day. By the way, you are my hero, mate. I don't, I don't, I don't tell people this, but look, I'm trying to be like you. <laughs> uh, my first hero was Rocky Marciano, and my second one's still on, so. Um, you've got better hair than him, anyway, he's dead. Um, I can't get him, Coconut oil gets your memory back, doesn't it? I think, I think it was. Anyway, any idea where I went again? Yeah, thanks, yeah. So it's your intent. If it's annoying, sorry about it. It's because of that migraine last night. I keep forgetting where I am. So it's your intent and it's our intent, okay? Uh, so it's interpretation of words only. That's all That's all law can be. It can't be anything else. Uh, all so-called laws are created in the minds of men. Even common law, which is what I said earlier, has to. And it will become more apparent later. Um, laws have to be obeyed. We cannot ignore a law of the universe. You can't. How are you going to ignore a law from the universe? Um... Are you going to ignore the law of gravity, for instance? If I, if I jump off a building, I'm going to float, aren't I? Mm -hmm. All right, I might slow it down with a parachute and stuff, but eventually I'm going to come down to earth, aren't I? If it's, if it's a law, a proper law of the universe, then you, or where God or whatever, you have to, you haven't got a choice. Um, to decide whether something is law or not, ask yourself the following question. Can I choose whether to obey this law? Okay. If somebody offers you a law, especially a man-made law, you can decide to follow the law or you can disobey it, can't you? And become an outlaw, yeah? And it's not a law, it can't be a law because only law, universal, natural or God law, can't be disobeyed. It's impossible. And what I'm going to say, that's why I got sidetracked. The ones acting in dishonour that we've entrusted due to universal law is what I was trying to get to, is it will come back on them and it is now. And we've noticed now this year... Everyone's saying to me, this year's our year, and I've, we've already, we're only a couple of months into 2014, aren't we? And things are happening massively, absolutely massively. And it's universal law, it, if you believe in karma, whatever you want to call it, there's a price, again, uh, to pay, it is an exchange of value. The ones acting in dishonour, and they have done for a long time, it's coming back to, it's coming back to haunt them, and they're trying to get out now. Yeah. They're trying to desert a sinking ship. Okay, if I'm labouring this, just tell us. Um, <coughs> yeah, so it's not a law. Okay, um, and just to back this up, I found this, this is interesting. Um, every man, get this, read this, this is brilliant. Every man is independent of all laws, all laws, except those prescribed by nature. Okay, Na natural, universal, God's law. He's, get this, he is not bound by any institutions, 
formed by his fellow men without his consent. Okay, let's just, let's just backtrack. Um, every man is independent of all laws. Common law, commercial law, property law. Okay, it's actually a case file, you can look it up. And it is Cruden v Neal, 2NC, just to show you I've not made this up. It's a big long number, I can never make this up. 2NC, 388, 1796, 2SE, 70. Okay, so it's not just stupid Rob Freeman saying it. It's there, it's there as a case law. Another one, just to back it up even more. It's a bit long winded, but I'll read it. I never wanted to read at school, I seem to, I can't stop reading now. Um, Inasmuch as every government is an artificial person, like what Dave was saying, an abstraction and a creature of the mind only, okay? Uh, a, government, a government can interface only with other artificial persons, in, in essence what Chief Dave was saying. <coughs> Excuse me. The imaginary, having neither actuality nor substance, is foreclosed from creating and attaining parity. Parity is kind of equality. Okay, I'll read that again. The imaginary, having neither actuality nor substance, is foreclosed from creating and attaining equality with the tangible. Sounds bollocks, but in. The legal manifestation of this is that no government, as well as any law, agency, aspect, court, etc., can concern itself with anything other than corporate artificial persons and the contracts between them. Now, when the video comes out, maybe have a look at that again and try and take it in. But what it's actually saying, and that's the case, well, I'll not read it out, but 1795, blah, 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 blah. So you can actually look this up. This is, this is documented and recorded. It's not just me saying it. It's saying that everything's a fiction and they can only deal with other fictions, artificial persons created and the contracts, that, the fictional contracts that arise between them. Excuse me, that's what it's actually saying. And that's talking about government. Um, okay, and I, before I, I do the mandate, um, you know, go into the preamble and stuff, I need, I need, to, I need to get our head around this bit and how I came about it with law. Okay, this, this hopefully we'll be looking at law different to what we have done. As, and this is a definition just from an ordinary dictionary. I thought I'm not going to look at legal dictionaries and all these crap. I'm just going to look at uh, the language that we speak daily, hopefully. Uh, a law is, okay, definition of law, get this from an ordinary dictionary, an everyday dictionary. The system of rules which a particular country or community recognises as regulating the actions of its members and which it may enforce, may, and which it may enforce by the imposition of penalties. Okay, have a look at that again. The system of rules, so it's just rules. This is what law is. Which a particular country or community recognises as regulating the actions of its members so it's just rules to regulate you. That's not law. It's just rules, okay? Um, and which it may enforce, or it might not. It might not be able to, it may enforce, that's if you consent. It may enforce by the imposition of penalties. Um, and definition number two, a rule defining the correct procedure or behavior of a sport. Wow, that's what law is. It's a game, isn't it? Look at the word agreement that we all get tricked into. What's an, the anagram of agreement is enter game. It's a fucking sport. We're having our pants down. Um, okay, so laws are bollocks unless they are natural, universal. So those case, those cases, um, laws bollocks as far as I'm concerned, unless it's universal or made by God or natural. You can call it any of those three, whichever one you want to. Okay, so if all the rest of the laws just um, bollocks, what have we got? And this is where the mandate's going to come from. Okay, what we have got is principles. Two things called um, principles and axioms. Axioms is a bit, little bit like maxims, for those that, that do know. So we've got to have something in place. Um, and what they've done is they've mirrored, they've copied the system of uh, natural laws and switched it on us and told us it's law. And then they punish us. Okay, so if I've said there's no law, then there's got to be something. Otherwise we'd all just be killing each other. Or would we? Maybe we won't. Okay, so this principle, let me tell you what a principle is. A fundamental truth, and this is a definition of what a principle is. A fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behaviour or for a chain of reasoning. Okay, it doesn't make much sense on its own yet. An axiom uh, is a, virtually the same thing. Um, a statement or proposition which is regarded as being established, accepted or self-evidently true. 
It can be either spoken or written. Okay. Axioms are usually written. Um, principles can be, but a principle and axiom, what we're saying is, is if everybody in this room started living together for the next five years in this car park, we built a community, we'd live by a set of principles that would naturally evolve that's right by each other. I won't go in his house and nick his underpants, because uh, you know what I mean, because they're better than mine, would I? I'd ask him if I could, I could swap his underpants for my dentures or something, wouldn't I? You know, we, we'd develop it between us, wouldn't we? Um, if I was fixing someone's car and he says, well, do you like eggs? And he gave me a load of eggs, that, that's how it all work. So that's what principles and axioms are. They develop, established over time and become self-evidently true. You know, that's a lot of writing, isn't it? Stuff you know. <laughs> right, to understand how evil controls people, it's necessary to understand the difference between principle and law, and then we'll get on to mandate stuff. Okay. If we just read the mandate preamble, it'll not make as much sense. This is my journey, how I evolved to this concept. I haven't spoke to you, have you? I don't know why, it's just us. Forget them, it's just, just us now. <laughs> They're in cheap seats. Um, you're looking at us, just fucking ignore them. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, understand the difference between principle and law, okay. So, a principle is a truth that creates freedom. It has to over time, okay. Um, a law is a lie that creates slavery, it does. But it's a rule to a sport or a game. Uh, laws are artificial ideas created by men to restrict the thinking and understanding of people. That's what law, that's why it's there. So it restricts our thinking. We don't think we can do something. We know it's not, um, we know it's not wrong to do it, but it's against law. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not wrong for me, it's not wrong for me to drive out my seatbelt on, is it? Um, if I choose that, or to ride a motorbike with no crash on me on, it's not wrong, because it's my head. I want to smash my head in, it's up to me, isn't it? But it's against law, I'll get done. So that's what I'm saying, it restricts, uh, restricts the thinking and understanding of people. This is incredible. Laws mask themselves in authority, this is how it works, this is the control. Laws mask themselves in authority. I don't mind my pointing to it, you can see it anyway, can't you? I'll do it from here. It's because I like them shadow puppet things, Lord. Well, um, laws mask themselves in authority, so that they can impersonate principles, wow. That's what I'm saying, a law, they've mirrored it, they've took it, uh, laws mask themselves in the authority. In the, in the authority. Sexy yeah, voice. Um, and the authority is the courts, the police, the security agencies, and all the councils and all that. So what they're doing is they're impersonating principles. They even call them principles of law. Um, when people mistake law for principle, their freedom is restricted. That will become apparent. Um, when people mistake truth for the ideas of authority, their abilities and their wisdom are diminished. This is the purpose of law. That's the purpose of create, man-made created law. Nothing else. Um, authority. That, remember, they work for us. They're our public servants. They take over. The janitor of the buildings took over the building because everyone's gone away for a week and he thinks he's playing the big cheese, and he? he thinks he's his. That's, that's what they've been doing. So what they do is they dream ideas up um, to de uh, diminish our wisdom and so they can control us. That's what law is simply for control, nothing else. Now, you might say, well, if law is for control and nothing else, without it, what would happen? That's where principles and axioms come in. It's down to us. It's our responsibility. Back to honour and dishonour again. I try and live my life by two principles. And it's, I've been doing it for quite a few years now. Uh, and it's really simple to do. Um, if it's not right, don't do it. And if it's not true, don't fucking say it. And you get up tomorrow morning if you're not already doing it. And just have one day doing that, and you'll be amazed at how much in honour you're starting to be. If it's not right, don't do it, and if it's not true, don't say it. And I had a third one to it, is, if I can help somebody that day, and it might be something really small. Uh, I go into a local shop, and this woman's really fucking miserable behind counting jobs. Like, she must work 99 hours a week, like that. So I come out with one of my cheesy, crappy jobs, and she laughs. I go out, and I think she's probably just been nice, but at least I've helped a little bit just by that. Or I can help somebody with some... You know, the guy called for that. I want to see the rest of the routine much better. Let's step it up a bit. Right, I'll step it up a bit. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I help people with documents, and I can see people here that have helped me, and I've helped them. Um, you look like security guards at the back, I'm shitting myself. You're not going to come over and beat me up, are you? Look at them. <sighs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, so, um, if it's not right, don't do it. If it's not true, don't say it. And if you can help someone, uh, and I've got some great friends in the audience that are really helping me at the moment, and 
when you do help uh, other people, it comes back to yourself. Anyway, this is what I'm saying about um, principles <coughs> and axioms. Um, where do we get to? Oh, no, 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 no. That one, thank you. Yeah. Uh, a, law, a law destroys freedom because it's a lie. Oh, okay, it has to be a lie. Um, sounds bollocks, but it's become more apparent now. A principle, however, creates freedom. Freedom because it is knowledge. That which destroys freedom is evil. Okay, the whole point of evil is to destroy freedom. Okay, finish off this bit and we'll get to mandate stuff. Principles and axioms then, just to recap. Um, there are no real laws other than natural stroke, universal stroke, God laws. But there are, however, principles. These have evolved and become established over time and have become the correct way for people to live. The principle dictates fairness and equality for all. Okay. There are also axioms which can be a written expression of the principles of we the people. Okay. So we can develop principles over time and write axioms or just write as principles and that's our written statement of what we've experienced and it's an evolutionary um, process. Uh, like I say, if us lot live together for, uh, I don't know, six months, the natural order would, would sort it out between us, wouldn't we? We all... I think it, I don't know. I think it were. I think it was Sarah earlier said that um, when scarcities abound, that's why. Um, I can't remember what exactly your words, but that's why crime exists because they make it as scarce. The ones controlling it make it as scarce as possible. So we have to commit crime. People get desperate, don't they? Um, and between us as a community, there won't be scarcity because we share it out, don't we? This is what I mean about um, trying to help people. And if it's not right, don't do it. And if it's not true, don't say it. If it's not true, why would you say something that's not true? What's the point of that? It's just a lie, isn't it? So once that happens, we, we sort it out between us. Uh, that, 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 where do we get to? Oh, yeah. Uh, written expression. That's it. That's all there are. Principles and axioms. Uh, we the people create and set our own principles and axioms that supersede any so-called laws. Uh, they are based on one truth, and this is the whole crux of the people's mandate, is do no harm to another living soul. That's your fit before you make any move, spend a penny, um, do anything, take anything, say anything to anybody. Your first priority is, hang on a minute, I'm not going to cause any harm to another, notice it says living soul, that includes animals, that includes, you don't go down chopping trees. Um, it, yeah. It is, and that's what I'm coming to. Principles that we develop, and axioms that we develop, well said, is the law of the universe, because that's us, as we know. It's not something we, we, we can... If you're looking up at stars and thinking that's something um, separate from us, that's us. We're part of that whole... Like Dave said, we're expressing ourselves individually, that creation thing. So why would we destroy ourselves? Exactly right. It's universal law. And that's why this mandate, with enough people on it, cannot fail. Because it's us, which is that. Uh, so do no harm to another living soul. That, that's the first and foremost thing. Uh, rule of law. Okay. This is how they've done what they are doing. Um, will you shout me when there's a break or some sort? I was going to say, do, do these times before you go to the People's Mandate and then, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, the rule of law. The rule of law is the single most dangerous idea ever inflicted upon mankind. Strong statement, isn't it? And it's the greatest swindle of all time as well. As I said earlier, laws mask themselves in authority so that they can impersonate principles. The authority principle describes the behaviour of the people who live under the rule of law. Authority or authorities, um, authority exercises control over the lives of people and are specifically, cre spe sorry, again, specifically created by the criminal class to control us. Okay, that's why... Um, 2012, um, 4,218 new legislation came through. 4,218 in 2012, how the hell are we supposed to know any of that? Okay, and that's because they're forever demonising us and making us criminals, so it's going to soon be illegal. That's that legal system I'm going to tell you about a little bit more. Soon the, uh, it's going to be illegal to fart, pick your nose, or whatever, isn't it? Because Ever increasing, uh, and the real criminals are hiding behind legislation to protect themselves, making us ever and ever more and more criminal. So that's the idea behind it all. And that's why uh, authority exercises control over the lives of people like that. Um, it's often said that anarchy 
would reign without the rule of law, which is what I said earlier. If we've not got law, um, everyone says there'd be anarchy. Mm, would they? What is anarchy? Okay. A state of disorder due to absence of non-recognition of authority. Okay. It's, they're only calling it disorder. It's not disorder in the sense that we think. Their version of disorder is non-recognition of authority. Wow. Why should there be? None of us have got any more authority than anybody else, have we? We're all equal, aren't we? So we come to a decision between us. We're adult. We know what we're doing. Disorder, which they say, oh, it should lead to anarchy. Most people don't even know what anarchy means. The disorder they're talking about um, is that we're not recognising authority. Well, that's what kind of fucking disorder I'd like. Bring it on. Uh, or other controlling systems. Oh, well, that's from an ordinary English dictionary again. I think I'm just about finished this McGill took mandate thing. I don't know how many, I don't have to go forward to see how many slides we are, but we'll have a break after this. So authority. Okay, there is no authority on earth that can rightfully govern your life, my life, or anybody's lives, unless you're concerned. The simplest authorities are common thieves. They're your councils and stuff like that. Not just the councils, not just limited to them, but the simplest authorities are just thieves. It's all about stealing off us, isn't it? That's what it's all about. They use extortion or stealth or both to confiscate things that you um, that we value. That's the whole game. That's the end of the game. Really. It's to steal everything off us, isn't it, that we hold valuable, including our children, houses, cars, whatever it is, every bit of flipping money. Authority teaches you through distorted ideas that you are not capable uh, or worthy of living free. Okay, it's down to value again. We, th the whole system. Um, that Sarah and this lady here spoke about earlier is that they show us that we're not worthy, we're worth nothing. That's why celebrities, in, um, look at celebrities and, and multi-billionaires, we look up, there's stars, that's what we look up. Paris, look at Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton still takes a shit on, she spouts bathroom out and, you know what I mean, picks her nose and she's a cow and all these really nice celebrities, all the great celebrities and people bow down, it's to make us seem valueless and have no worth, and that's what it's all about. The less worth that we think we've got, we're just going to take it, aren't we, and think we're never going to amount to anything. Um, so, yeah, ca um, that you are not capable of, uh, or worthy of living free. We don't deserve to live free, we're just nothing. We're sinners, like David say McBile, we're absolutely nothing, we'll never amount to nothing. We're all shitbags, aren't we? No, we're not. Authority, great, great point. Authorities teach that other people can manage your life better than you can. That's what authority is there for. Tacit procuration. Handling every single bit of our affairs. Why can't we do it? We're, we're clever enough between us all. We've all got different strengths and weaknesses. Why can't we just do it ourselves? Um, with a callous disregard to your, for your worth, you are commanded to behave according to someone else's ideas. I don't even know where I got that line from. I like that. I'll remember that again. With a callous... That can't be my words. That's too good. I think I've linked this from my book because this is good. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? With a callous disregard for your worth, you are commanded to behave according to someone else's ideas. Absolutely. Uh, if something is of value to you, you can be sure that some authority somewhere is willing to take it from you and or charge you a fee to regulate it or license you. That's about sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. Flipping hell, what's this going on for? Evil versus freedom, okay. Um, the definition of freedom... The definition of freedom... The definition, the definition of freedom uh, is the infinite value of men, women and children. We know we've got infinite value, that's why we can exchange it. Because universal um, value and energy is infinite, and we are it. So we've got infinite value. The definition of evil is the destruction of freedom. That's, that's what it's all about. It's to stop freedom of action, freedom of thought. Um, it's to stop every aspect of freedom, that's, what, that's why evil exists. Because evil seeks to control, doesn't it? Otherwise, why would it even rear its horrible ugly head? It has to control something. Um, everything that is evil teaches people that they have limited value or zero worth. That you've got a little bit of value, yeah, if you're good at work, get your head down, you get two holidays a year if you're lucky. And then you get a pension when you retire at 65, and then you've got about five years left before you keep it. That, that's your value. While evil seeks to destroy or hide a man or woman's worth, freedom recognises our full potential and our full value. Nothing on earth is more valuable than us. So it's time we invested in ourselves and each other. 
Okay, and uh, this is interesting. I was going to say something one day, but he's bigger than me, so I thought, okay, I'm the best not to say no. They were talking about, I know he's like that, isn't he? And I'm only little, I thought, shit him. If I were a bit bigger, I'd tell him. But he wanted that commandments, weren't he? And he says he's ten commandments, and we can scale them down to three. So I thought I'd have a go. <coughs> have a go, that's a bit cheerful talk. It's because I'm on, you're on my now, you're on my patch. Have a go. I thought I'd have a go. Uh, uh, are you laughing at me? I told Bob, I can't believe people have come to see yeah, this crap. Um, I thought I'd have a go at rewriting the Ten Commandments. I thought this is going to be right, this is going to take me ages. Well, three minutes later, I put my pen down. Commandment number one, get this. They, I didn't want to disagree with Dave because he's got his own views and that's what freedom's all about, free thinking. I wrote all Ten Commandments like this. In fact, it didn't take me three minutes, it took me two minutes. Thou shalt not kill or cause harm of any kind to another living soul other than that requiring immediate self-defence and or the immediate defence of another or others. End of all commandments. Yeah. 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 I must have that one because that is brilliant, isn't it? I must have that one. <laughs> but it says it all, doesn't it? And so we're being, as we know, we're being distracted and sidewinded and tricked in these Ten Commandments and the, 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 the Bible is the... Is, all the other laws are crap. The Bible is the law, encoded. encoded. Why would it be encoded? Why can't it just be plain English? 180 odd versions. All the <laughs> commandments. Remember all your commandments. They're in order. Thou shalt not that. It's, look, sorted in one fell swoop, in it? By a lump from Sheffield. So, there's nothing we can't do. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because that is the initial statement for the People's Mandate. So, grab a drink, have a slash, and see you back in a bit. Cheers. <laughs> Right guys, People's Monday, this is Proactive, this is where we're going, 2014, the energy's here, we're all together, big round of applause, Rob Freeman, let's have it. You feel like a flipping celebrity, right, I've been told stop moving about you prick, so, stop moving about. Finally told me now, he's cutting out because I'm flipping moving about, aren't I? So, I'm going to be a statute, a statue, okay, um, Okay, so, all that other stuff that uh, I shared with you earlier led me to this and that Max Egan video and others saying stuff and I thought, well, it's always down to us, so what can we do? Uh, just to recap quickly, we can't just all send our, our ID back and refuse to be part of this system because how are we going to survive? How are we going to feed ourselves, live in our houses without getting bullied? Then we're isolated, aren't we? That's how they pick us off, won't they, isn't it? So, we, but that is all true, that is all, because I've done it myself and people that know me well, and there's quite a few, that's what I decided to do, and I created my own reality by doing that. Um, and it takes a certain amount of fear you have to lose to be able to do that. Um, and as a result of that, as I said earlier, from, um, I come across the um, um, financial scam through necessity, basically. I've told this story lots of times. So what I did is, when I realised that we're not really paying for anything, that we're getting screwed, I thought, well, if we're not paying for anything, I'm not going to pay for anything because we're not paying for anything. So I didn't pay for anything. I got a bit of Tourette's. So I know it sounds bollocks, but it, this is what I'm saying. It took a while for me to get used to, it wasn't like I was trying to get out of bills and stuff. I actually, the first thing I learned when I started looking after my kids is that we're not actually paying. And I thought, well, if we're not paying, why am I gonna live a lie and, and pay it and, and know that I'm doing, why would I do something that I know is fake and false and fictional? Why would I engage in that? I'm from, you know, I'm, I'm from a street in Sheffield, we don't do that. Somebody says, Rob, you've got a big nose, I say, I know. And that's it, it's done, isn't it? I can't say, well, I broke it when I'm a four. I've got a big nose, haven't I? That's it, that's life. So when I realised that, I thought, well, I'm not going to just pretend to pay. Like they said, we promised to pay. Why would I do that? I'm never going to fulfil that promise. There's nothing back in that. I might as well write it on a, on a bit of bog roll and say I promised to pay. That's all I'm doing. And that's how I, it evolved, where I don't pay for anything apart from, like I said, my mortgage which I've tried it on twice, and I stopped, it, I stopped eviction last year 24 hours. I think they'll kick him out 24th of January, and I managed to stop the 23rd. I'm going to do it again this year, just to wind him up anyway. But like I say, if I can crack that, which I don't like using that word, when I crack it, um, that's it, I've managed to achieve what I want, to, apart from food, if I could find an instrument to swap for food, I'd, I'd do that. You know, if, they, if they take this playing card here, I'd swap that for food, and I'll get around to that eventually, because we're not paying for anything. So based on that, I refuse to live in a world of fiction, but it's difficult for um, might be a married couple where uh, she might be awake and he may not be, or you've got kids and you don't want to be 
like I did, you don't want to be um, putting yourself at risk. And so there is a certain amount of fear. And so what I'm saying is, we know it's all true, we know, we know it's all right, we know, um, we know our servants are, are basically having our pants down, but if we try and do it individually like I do, we're going to get picked off. So why don't we, and I'll use this phrase carefully, have a common, a common thread um, and do it together, but instead of just doing it, why don't we demand from our servants, say, look, we know the game now, we know what's happening, what have you been doing? Show us what you've been doing because you work for us. And that's different than cornering that rat. Now we're giving them a way out. And that's what the preamble, which I'm going to come to after this, that's what it means. Show us what you've been doing. We, we demand to know now. Show us. If it all tallies up, carry on as you are. Um, when we get to the end of this talk, it's not going to be much longer. Now. We'll, we'll see that they can't justify all their actions and what they've been doing. It's impossible. Because we know um, they've been having our pants down. And remember, if they ignore us, which is the only thing they can really do, is ignore us. Tacit, pro tacit procuration. They're agreeing by their silence of what we're telling them. This time, we're not walking and steaming and accusing them. We're saying, what have you been doing? There's 90 days. Show us what you've been doing. Okay, you're ignoring us. We're giving you a chance. You won't show us what you've been doing. So now we've got to assume that you're doing something fraudulent. That's different from steaming and saying you're committing fraud. It's now saying you're agreeing by your silence that you are. And we refuse to engage in that for any, any further. So that's the basis of the whole thing. I hope this is making sense. So before I get to that preamble, so it's just this is the preamble, and then we can shuffle off and have a drink. Um, so all that other stuff and everything I've done over the last few years, um, and I didn't, didn't just wake up six years ago, that's just the law and commerce stuff. I've, um, in fact, I don't think I've ever been fully asleep, really. Um, my brother probably vouched for me. I don't, I'm always different to everybody else, don't I? Physically, I'm... Uh, my mum says from being two years old I couldn't be told what to do, but if anybody asks me I'd do it, which I will now. If someone tells me, I must have inherently um, realised that they've not got any authority to tell me what to do, but if they ask me, I'll do it. And it's like when, you're, like, uh, when Sarah said on her talk, when you're a kid, when you're in that womb, you, you need those things, um, the communication, the love and all that, and you never stop needing it all the way through your life, you still need the stuff. This is what I mean about paying um, for the right to live, for life. We all need um, heat, shelter, food, water, communication, the ability to travel, um, to express yourself. We all need that, and it never changes from being a little baby to when we finally shuffle off this 3D plane. So that's the basis of all this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So before we do, um, before I constructed this um, preamble, which is only in draft form, so uh, I'm going to leave my details um, where you can contact me, and feel free to add stuff. And, or if you disagree, so well, I, don't, I don't understand that, or I don't like using that word, but it's our words again. Um, or oh, that doesn't make sense, or that's bollocks, or whatever you want to do. Uh, and until the final thing's written, and, and it's, an, it's an involvement, and we've all got input, like I said, and anybody else. Okay, so before I got to the preamble, um, I came up with this initial statement, and this is kind of what it's about. So, uh, People's Mandate um, initial statement. I wrote this um, and then I formulated a sort of draft preamble after, quite, quite a while after. Okay, so this is what I think and what I know to be happening right now. The legal system, or don't move, I've been told not to move. The legal system cannot be used by us against the corrupt government because it, um, it was not constructed to afford people remedy. There is no remedy within the legal system. Uh, but rather to tie people up in red tape um, and to protect that very system itself. They're in, therefore inferring... Um, that our remedy lies outside the legal system. Remember when I said I, I saw Max Egan talking on a video, he, he said some of this, uh, and so this is a little bit of his and, and what I've chucked in. Um, the legal system was designed by the system to protect itself, um, and the only rem remedies available to people are to recognise matters as criminal or tortuous. That's the only way we can do anything, is to recognise whoever's causing us harm uh, as a crime or a tort. I don't know if anybody, is anybody not familiar with what a tort is? Does everybody know what a tort is? Yeah? Uh, for the, just in case anybody's a bit shy to put their hand up, a crime's a crime, they've, you've, they've caused some sort of harm, uh, intentional harm. Uh, it's very, very simplified. And a tort is somebody can cause you harm, but they may not intend the harm. It might be through the, their negligence, but you still suffer the harm. So apart from crime and tort, tortuous, that's what we've got to recognise what they're doing. That's the legal system itself. 
every day is committing crimes and talks against us um, and hold the perpetrators individually and privately liable. Okay. The whole legal system um, has now become um, private entities, that's courts, government, um, police forces, they've become private entities. <coughs> Let's take a court for instance, it's now a private entity um, operating in a public building um, interfacing with what they call us the public, using public funding, but operating in private, and that's why we can't do anything. Um, okay, so th therefore, anything that falls under the banner of the legal system sees anything and everybody else outside of itself as an enemy. Okay, uh, I don't know if Dave mentioned it earlier, but the word name, that's why they hold the name, N A me, enemy. You use the name, you are the enemy. Uh, as foreign, as alien, alien. Uh, or as an occupier. That's back to that war thing that I mentioned at the beginning. That's what they see us as. Okay, if we're outside the legal system, this is how they view us. Uh, and an occupier is an invading, an invading foreign militia. So when I'm the occupier of my house, I've no right to be there. I took over that house by conquest in their eyes. This is the legal system I'm talking about. So if people or bodies don't fall under the remit, under the scope of the legal system, they are therefore seen by the system as either unrecognisable, which is why the people get ignored in court. If you're not, um, if you're not Mr. Jack Smith, then I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Jack of the Smith family. You're unrecognisable. We've got no place to be in there. Get out. We don't, we don't even know who you are. So we're unrecognisable. Or we're an aggressor. What do they do? They call security. Talking to a chap today and they call security on him straight away in court. <coughs> So that's how they view us if you operate outside the legal system. The, I'll tell you what, I've got a plain card here, look. Um, they'll show you a <coughs> this card here, look. They'll show you a legal system. Like, I, I, that's their legal system, and at first it looks fantastic, and it is a great system. Imagine it's made of bricks like this place here. So your legal system like that, look, and you view it, and it looks perfect, doesn't it? It's absolutely well thought out. Legislation is fantastic. Spin it round. Looks great, doesn't it? We think it's a solid system. We think it is law. We've always thought it's law. People now, 99% of people still think it's law. Spin it over. Look at it from that angle. Everything looks fantastic. It looks like a solid brick foundation, doesn't it? But now we've woke up. We, we start to look at it from that angle now. The foundation and basis of that legal system is as thin as that fucking playing card. It has to be. Yeah? It has to be because it's a fiction. And it has to be a fiction because it was created in men's minds. So what I'm saying is, what look like solid bricks of that legal system now, look as flimsy as that playing card now. Because, why? It's not changed, has it? It's because we're viewing it from a different perspective. <coughs> and that's what this is about. Didn't even make sense, does that, that make sense? It didn't sign it, come out of it. Garbage. Um, so, a critical mass, a critical mass, I strongly feel now that there is a critical mass of people. We don't need um, everybody to wake up and take action. I don't know how true this is, but some American mathematician said we need, um, I think he said a hundredth of one percent of the population is enough to make a change. A hundredth of one percent, I don't know how true that is. But there's certainly that amount now uh, in England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales and globally. Uh, so a critical mass that I, I know is already here of people can come together and mandate the will of the people don't move about by instructing the government to hold our public servants um, our public trustees the same thing accountable for breach of trust ultimately that's what we're going to do but like I said we can't go steaming in yet uh, and thus be forced to comply with the mandate and the will of the people once it was delivered correctly okay and by the way I'm not an authority on anything I ain't got a clue I don't you know what I'm doing half the time but it just felt right um, and a lot of people it's resonated with them so that's why I wrote it down important we must collapse the fictional trust set up by the government stroke crown in our as put our names in commas and denounce the ownership of our names by the crown um, that was achieved by the creation of the birth certificates which I'm sure you all know about uh, the crown copyrighted name is is the all capitalized name um, you see, once again, they've stolen that office because um, I've got a family name. Why have they stolen that family name and, and capitalised it? That's basically what they've done. Uh, and so they've set up fictional, all trusts are fictional. They've set up trust, basically, and we need to collapse that. Uh, and it's done really easy. 
The foundation of the mandate from its very core has one golden rule, which I said earlier, and everything else from there on is built up, out, uh, sorry, built up around this one rule, do no harm to another living soul. The government's failure to comply with the will of the people would leave them unable to continue and they would have to step down and be replaced by others selected by the people. <coughs> Ultimately, when we look at the solutions to the problems and challenges that we face, they always come down to the people themselves. Okay, so how do we get to this stage? Is it even possible? Is any of this possible? Is it just, is it just stupid Rob Freeman with a pipe dream? Well, it might be. Who said to so? himself? It's possible. Possible? Yes. Oh, wow, like it. It's probable now. Um, so when, in, when enough of us apply what's in our hearts, and we know to be fair and right and do it en masse, then we not only have the power of people, which is us, but the energy to make the correct changes to the current system, for ones that are right for each and every one of us. Make the changes to the system. If we're not fighting the system, remember, we're fighting the ones running the system that are supposed to be our servants and are shafting us. Um, all it takes is enough of us to join together in an ever-growing number, so we get 5,000 people, that would mean we stop there, we go on. If we get a million people, they're going to start listening. And deliver the people's mandate to the government, dictating our terms. It's us. Not them. Our terms, from the people, by the people, and for all the people, it's up to us. Nobody's going to do this for us. Um, we can live in a thousand lifetimes, it's down to us. But it's not hard, I hope by the end, we're not long to go now, but when we get to the end of this, you'll realise it's not hard to do. It's just having the bollocks to say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking it anymore. Um, like I said, it'll become apparent. When we do it in this country, then maybe all countries will follow suit and the world will change. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but once again, it's definitely possible. I don't know why I've got my name on there, I already know my own name, don't I? <laughs> okay, so that was the initial statement based on all that um, research stuff I've done on, well, for years really, especially this last six, six or seven years, and then this newer stuff with tacit procreation of the law. I realised that law is really a construct. Um, so this is only a draft, and it's, it's changeable, and I've changed it a few times. Um, I don't think, I'm not sure, but anywhere in this preamble, remember what a, a preamble is? It's um, prior notification of what, what our intentions are as, as we the people. Okay, uh, I don't think anywhere in this preamble do I use the word law, which is pretty interesting. I think I did it on the very first bit of it and I scribbled it out. Okay, date to be inserted, it says 2014. What I'm aiming for, and it's just by pure luck, uh, and I think the other stuff that I mentioned earlier, the different groups and organisations, that it's not really worked yet, is because, um, this, I'll, I'll mention them, this OPPT, um, and I think, is it Universal um, Trust? Yeah. In fact, I'm not slagging any of that. I'm not slagging. It's absolutely fantastic. There's groups everywhere. There's ITTCS. There's, it's just incredible what everyone's doing. I think, <clears throat> for me, I'm really chuffed to be part of all this. I'm not slagging any of those things. But I think that the only reason they've not worked is because the time's not right for it. And I know now that 12 months, 18 months, time's right now. That's why people are saying to me now, everywhere I go when I do the radio show, everyone's saying, this is our year, things are happening. And it is, everybody can see it. And that's because the time's right. If this does nothing else but instigates something for, the, for us to finally do something and, and, and achieve what we want to achieve, then it serves its purpose. But either way, the time's getting very, very close. But just by chance, if, I could get a people, if we could get a million people's names by 2015, it just so happens to be exactly 800 years after Magna Carta, so that would be really interesting, might it, when it gets served in full. So that would be interesting. <coughs> I don't believe in coincidences and everything's uh, synchronicity, isn't it? So, irrespective of the day, okay. So this is what we're going to serve on um, these public servants, every corporation, anything you can think of that will become apparent if we get enough um, common people's names on. Take notice every man and woman living on the geographical land masses commonly known as England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. Irrespective of anyone holding any titles, don't forget any of these words can be changed in phrases, irrespective of anyone holding any titles, occupation, government positions, stroke officers, positions of, positions of perceived authority, legal standing or other, that this preamble is the introduction to the People's Mandate uh, and serves as prior notification of the forthcoming People's Mandate and concerns every living soul on the aforementioned landmasses. This preamble affords a period of 90 days, so we're going to give them three months, 90 days, um, for anyone holding office, officers, and subsequently anyone working within and under those officers, 
irrespective of their nature of business or other, that have been notified by this preamble and will be subsequently mandated by the people, that we the people of the aforesaid landmasses require <coughs> a full audit and breakdown of all the financial accounting undertaken over the last three years of every government department, office, corporation, industry or other that we believe has or may adversely affect our fundamental freedoms and basic rights necessities. Okay, in a nutshell, what that's saying is that we can save this on anyone, anybody, any corporation, Tesco. We go to the top, we, go, we don't bother with the branches and the small bits. Tesco, we serve it in all the supermarkets, all the banks, all the mortgage institutions, every government department, DVLA, social services, Department of Work and Pensions, anybody, anything. They're all subordinate to us. We, we want to see what you've been doing. Um, we're giving you 90 days to show. It's an audit, it's an audit and accounting, but it's got, it's, there's two attachments to it. Show that all your figures match up. What have you been doing with its our money? I don't care if it's owned by Rothschilds, banking system, bollocks. Whatever it is, the real money's us. We're the currency, really, aren't we? We're the energy behind it. So, attachment one, show that all the accounting matches up perfectly. What have you been doing for the last three years? I've picked three years because we give them three months. They can do a year's accounts each month and submit it in, in three months. All the accounting must add up and tally up, yeah? Attachment number one. Attachment number two. Show us that when you made those profits, that you kept intact at all times people's fundamental freedoms and rights. How is any corporation or industry or anything ever going to be able to do that? Well, that's their get out for the corner of rat. This is your chance. You've got 90 days to do this, yeah? Uh, I've read that, answer. So that's what that, that's the idea behind it. Um, Truth Tuesday, I spoke to him a little bit, and he says, "You know, you don't you don't want to be a person. You don't want to be a people." And I said, "I know all this, um, but again, I, I want to try and look at it. But now we can look at law slightly different to what we have been doing. Um, so what, it's the intention of our words. So it will say in the preamble, um, this preamble of the subsequent following Monday." are written in plain, commonly used English, what we use. No other language or translation or meaning is to be interpreted from any of the words used. They can't spin it around and do what they normally do, the spin doctors. It's our words and our intentions. It means what it says, it means what we say. Government and every industry stroke, commercial enterprise, that's anything uh, or other, so it can incorporate anything like, for instance, charities, for instance, which we know a lot about charity, so or other, and that's how they write their stuff. So let's shove it back at them, or other, and we can incorporate what we want in that. Or non, or representative of, and operate for the well being of the people, the commonwealth, it's us. Okay, there's nothing wrong with a corporation earning profit, absolutely, I'm all for it. But don't rip anybody off, forget the price, a fair exchange of energy. So whatever you're charging for it, it has to be reasonable and fair. And if it encroaches on somebody's fundamental freedoms, fundamental freedoms, then you can't make that profit and it can't be done. Okay, and that's what that means. Um, so for the well-being of the people. Every government department, industry stroke, commercial enterprise or other is therefore subservient to the people. Every government department, industry stroke, commercial enterprise or other is answerable and accountable to the people. It has to be. Otherwise, if it's not, then what's the point? We might as well not even carry on. If after the audit, or audits, um, and accounting for all government departments, I have to keep repeating it, why is it, oh, it says or over there on its own, I don't know, I've done that. Um, accounting for all government departments, industry, stroke, commercial enterprises, or other, or other, that I have been, uh, sorry, that have been served by this preamble, have been submitted on a public forum of the people's choice. So what I'm saying there is, we've given three months, and we decide, now, they, they act in private, sorry, they are private, and they're acting uh, in, uh, in a public arena. And there's a big difference between private and um, public. This is private, but we're interfacing with public bodies. Public servants, we're kept in the private, that's why we have common names. Okay, We're not the public doing this. We're private individuals, it's the power of one, collectively. So we're operating in the private, but we're interfacing like they do, with public, with those in their public capacity. Um, 
So we're gonna, we want them to submit it on a public forum of our choice to show their accounting publicly. So we're interfacing and engaging with the public, but we're staying as private uh, individuals. Um, public forum of our choice, people's choice. If people find that the checks and balances do not equate to a fair, honest, true, and responsible administrative reflection of our Commonwealth, whilst maintaining our fundamental freedoms and rights, and the people will issue the people's mandate after the 90-day period has elapsed. So they get 90 days to do all this, and what I think they're going to do is just totally ignore us. I don't think they'll do anything. I think they'll just laugh at us at first, which is fair enough. The people's mandate is our inalienable, natural, and God-given right to self-determination and self-governance, and this is the crux of the whole thing for me. Um, self-governance... I don't like using the word governance, but I couldn't think of anything else. Um, Self-determination and self-governance. Like I said, principles and axioms. There has to be a set of rules in place. Um, and um, principles, and look at the word value that I keep using. Well, you can have values, can't you? We have values between us, and we have principles between us. Yeah? So what I'm saying is self-determination and self-governance. I can't think of another word. That we don't have to use governance. But what I'm saying is we'll direct our own lives as a community or whatever we want to be and it will be remember do no harm to another living soul first okay um and a, and a definition of terrorism is um any attempt to prevent the self-governance of a people is and will be deemed as an act of terrorism and one definition of terrorism terrorism is to uh, prevent self-governance so straight away there they everything we do they try and call us terrorists that's why this is not a group of people we're individual there's no group, no membership, like I said, no association. We can't be shut down under terrorism laws. But what we can do then is tell them that if they refuse to let us self-govern, then they are the terrorists. Uh, the people will deal with the terrorists accordingly. And you can check all these terms out, by the way. Check them out in ordinary English dictionaries and legal ones and commercial. Do what you want. It doesn't take long, and it is right. Uh, the people will deal with the terrorists accordingly, and as we see fit, as is our inalienable, inalienable right. This preamble and subsequent mandate of the people is not to be treated as a threat, and very important this, not to be treated as a threat. We're not threatening anybody. Nor is it of a frivolous nature. It's not a joke. We're not taking piss and having a laugh. It's serious business. It's not vexatious. We don't hate you or anything. We just want, to sh we just want you, the servants, to show us what you've been doing. Because well, I'm sure everybody in this room and probably everybody in this flipping country agrees, whatever you're doing, you're not fucking doing it right, are you? We're all suffering, we're not happy, you might be alright, but we're not. So just show us what you've been doing, because we're not very happy with this. So it's not vexatious, we don't hate you or anything. We just want you to show us what you've been doing, and if you're crap, we're well, sweet well, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> nor does it pr promote an intention of ill will. If you have been doing something crap, we're not going to say we hate you for the rest of your life, just go away and leave us alone. Um, but serves to notify each and every government department and every industry, stroke corporation or other, including all employees and agents too, take heed that this is your one and only chance to justify and account for your financial dealings and to show evidence proof and just cause in all your commercial transactions that your primary objective is one of serving the people, which is what they should be doing, with the people's fundamental freedoms and rights remaining intact at all times before any corporate profits have been or are currently, uh, have been or are currently being made. Not good English, but like I say, it's draft. Before any corporate profits have been or are currently being made. In other words, you've got to justify your actions. The people's mandate is non-negotiable. If they don't ignore us, they might start coming back with some crap legalese flipping argument. We're not interested, it's not negotiable. We're not, we're not asking you. It's a mandate. We're commanding you. Show us what you've been doing. Your servants, show us what you've been doing. When you take your servant's outfit off, you can join with the people. While you're in, while you, you chose, and while you're in that um, particular capacity, then you're a servant. Show us what you've been doing. It's not negotiable. You can't argue with us. We're not even arguing with you. There's no confrontation. Show us what you've been doing. If you're not happy, bye bye. It's not open for debate, deliberation, and/or criticism. Not by them. It is by us. We're not by them. They work for us. It's the will of the people. When we decide what's right, then we'll tell them. Um, <coughs> It will carry the common names of ordinary men and women. I love this line, it's my favourite line. It overstands anything of a legal nature. Don't move, Robbie, we're told. Okay. It overstands anything of a legal nature. It doesn't, we don't understand anything. It overstands anything. It's what we say. 
Um, the, will of the, the will of the people is a universal principle, and this preamble and subsequent people's mandate uh, are our written axioms of truth and a reflection of the inherent natural laws of universe, stroke God creator, with the starting point being equality for all living souls. Sounds like a plan, you know, doesn't it? The foundation of the people's mandate from whence everything else is built up from and arises from is built upon in the core truth, like I said, do no harm to another living soul. The fundamental principle is the first footing to be ever mindful of. And we'll start, this is the important bit. There, uh, a lot of people who have got on board have said, oh, Rob, it's a great solution. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's not a solution. Yeah, yeah, it is. It gets rid of them. No, no. It's, this is not the end. This is the first step for us evolving spiritually um, and, and as a species to be able for self-determination and self-governance. That's what it's about. It's, it's a solution in that we get rid of those. But it's not the end because we're going to evolve then for 20, 30, 100 years, 500 years down the line, we can do this. That's what this is all about. Um, and we'll start the people on a journey whose final destination will be one of self-determination and self-governance. So we've got to learn what to do. We don't know what we're doing. But if we have a million people, we you know we've got accountants, we've got people that can supply gas and electric, we've got people that are good with money, we've, we've known people that can write the principles down that we all have to abide by. As long as we don't evolve into, down to greed, into, and whoever we select to do what, what from the people, the not every four years, like on a vote or whatever it is, we'll keep an eye on them every week to week, day to day, month to month. And if they're not doing it right, we'll get out. We'll put somebody else in that is going to do it for us. This is this is the idea behind it. Um, so it's not a final solution. It's the first step towards absolute freedom. Um, it's the final desti destination uh, will be one of self-determination and self-governance that is just, fair, equal and prosperous for all the people living on the aforementioned geographical landmasses. Uh, there's not much more to go now, we can all get a drink. Uh, the people's mandate is coming. I know it's coming in some form or another. <coughs> it is coming. Excuse me. It is created stroke, granted by the people, for the people, and affords self-governance for all the people. Why can't you have a say in what's happening, or you or me, why can't we have a say? We can. There's nothing to stop us, as long as we all agree that whatever one chap says, or one lady, or this chap, is equal to it. If you feel like you've had a wrong done to you, then you get a chance. And that's what self-governance is all about. If this preamble and requirement for the audit accountant is ignored by anybody that it, that it has been served upon, so if they just ignore us, then we the people will proceed to the serving of the people's mandate in full after the 90 days time period has elapsed without the giving of any further notification that's it preamble you've got 90 days whatever you do you've got to justify your actions um, this preamble is a true and honest statement of the intention of the people living on the aforementioned geographical landmasses this preamble is served by the people living on the geographical landmasses, commonly known as England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. Notice I don't say Britain, and I didn't call them countries either. Um, not that it would matter because there are words, but as simple, simple as we can make it. Commonly used names uh, and commonly known as uh, geographical landmasses, commonly known as England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. And it's prior notification of the uh, forthcoming people's mandate. And it's served on this day, whatever day we decide. And there's enough of this. <coughs> And again, I've repeated, in reference to the first sentence in the preamble of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, um, and once again, I read it at the beginning, but now after all that bollocks I've just come out with, it seems to make more sense now, whereas recognition of the inherent dignity, wow, what a word, dignity is what it's all about, um, inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. So that will be the, the preamble. Last little bit, um, and then we can shuffle off. So I know the, the people's mandate is coming, or a version of the people's mandate is coming. It, something of that nature is coming because the time's right and we're all ready for it now. Um, that evil cannot carry on. Um, greed, can only, greed can only devour itself, can't it? Um, and eventually they'll turn on each other. Um, and it's time for us to instigate that with our intent because we because we want what's right for all of us, don't we? So eventually um, it's going to go and this is what I strongly, well I know is going to help instigate that. Um, 
So just to sum up, if our servants cannot show just cause for their actions, stroke in actions, also stuff um, that they didn't do, for instance, there was an eviction in, in, I think it was South Wales, in Wales, where the bailiffs went berserk um, and basically hurt the peaceful people and the police officers just turned and looked away. Unbelievable. In fact, there's people in this room that were there. It's sh shocking. If our servants cannot show just cause for their actions, our inactions, turning away, not looking after the people, and provide irrefutable proof that they upheld people's fundamental freedoms and basic rights, so necessities at all times, or they don't do it, it's not good doing it, looking after people four days a week and then other three making them, making them suffer, you've got to do it at all times, that's your job, your servants. And provide this within the 90 day time period, then it will be time for the people to begin a journey of self determination, which is what I said, that will finally result in self governance for we the people, England, Scotland, Ireland, and the Wales. Um, there is no, uh, and I think, and, and our Governor Paul Giovanni is really back me on this, and, and Delia are uh, really behind me on this, and others, um, so we're going to really get this, get to grips with this. There is nothing else, I don't, I don't think there's ever been anything else like the People's Mandate, I don't think there's ever been anything that Excuse me. The hard thing for me to say, I want to say it, but you're going to think, well, I'm going to toss it, but it's above, the, it's above the law. It's above the law that they're creating. Now, that could come over on this video as being wrong. But you think you're above the law? Yeah, we are above the law. We're above any law that's been constructed in a man's mind. We're not built, um, above God, creator, universal law, obviously. We have to abide by that. We're, we're above any law, which is everything else, so called law, that's been created in a man's mind. So, yeah, we are above the law. That's why there's been nothing else like it. Magna Carta and all the other important treaties and stuff always had law in mind at some stage. We, we, we don't need to bear law, not their laws in mind. We have our own principles and axioms. Um, so there's been nothing else, uh, or as, there's never been anything else. I don't think there will be anything else ever like the people's mandate because it should work and it will work if we want it to and there will be no need for it ever again. So it's an individual, unique opportunity like I said, I think we've got a year, year and a half, and we can do this. And I think if we don't get enough people on board, I think they're going to edge towards their end game. And I think it's, it's game over for us if we don't do something in a year and a half, maximum. Uh, it will soon be completed in full. And as I said, it will carry the commonly used names of everybody, uh, sorry, everyday men and women. It cannot be stopped. Once we start it, it cannot be stopped. It, only us can stop it. Um, I don't know why I've put thank you, but... Um, there's a, Website www.thepeoplesmandate.co.uk www anyway, It's got a forward, forward slash. Um, so the information's on there, a, a version of this preamble and some other stuff, and I'm going to be adding stuff next week and that. Uh, and obviously, criticalmassradio.co.uk, if you're not already listening to it, fantastic shows. Sarah, Paul, Alex, myself do shows. Ben, sorry, if I forgot anybody. Oh, oh. Moff, sorry, yeah, anybody else? That's about it. If I forget somebody, just no, that's it. Yeah, we all do shows, and there's other great hosts. Uh, seven nights a week, this show's on, um, and it's all leading up. All this is leading. I think is that the last slide? Because I can really let you get off then. Okay, I'm just going to finish off on this. So get onto the station, get onto the website. Um, if, if until this mandate, it's going to take a while for enough people to get on board. If you are struggling with debts and stuff. Get on to, I said this on every single talk I've ever done, is get on to get out of debt free. It is, it is the way for you to protect yourself. Um, I, I, how many members is on there now? Over 40,000. How many? 40,000. Oh my God. Well, that's <laughs> it takes that fear away because everybody shares. There's a great forum on the inf information that side and... So is, you know, we're mates and it's helping save people's lives. I know people have topped themselves because they can't take the debt scam they feel. And this is helping save people's lives. It's a fantastic concept. So get on to uh, getoutofdebtfree.org. Yeah. Uh, so just to finish off now, I read the conclusion I came to about law is and I read uh, a great author called um, Frederick Bastiat, obviously French. Uh, and I pulled this out, a false principle, remember about, I talked about principles, and everything I've told you tonight is, I've researched it, um, and if I've had a, um, a thought or a concept, I've tried to check it from many different sources, like those case things I was telling you, 
um, with those um, reference numbers. So it's not just bollocks, it's been thought about. Um, and Frederick Bas Frederic Bastiat, fantastic if you ever want to look at his stuff. <coughs> a false principle never has, never will be carried out to the end. To the end. Sorry. And we know what principles are now, we live by principles. That is the nearest thing to law. So their false principles, remember those laws that I said, that are disguising themselves as principles, they're false, they're fictional, and they'll never be carried out to the end. That's why I know we're going to win. We've got no option. What's the alternative to not winning? Losing? We're not going to lose. We, only, we, all, we, all, we will only lose if we decide to lose. Uh, so on the serving other people's mandate in full. Uh, okay. But this, is a, this is an addition. I'm not sure where this is going to go, but this is just a basic concept. We're nearly done now. I think it's probably a page and we've done. Okay, on the serving other people's mandate in full, the men and women whose common names are written on it will be in possession of a notice, a document, that will also be sent to all the government departments, officers, commercial industries and others, although that notice will state that. This is after we've served um, the preamble, they've ignored it and we served the mandate. All and any alleged financial and corporate debts, stroke obligations or others, directed at we the people, this is everyone who's got the name on the mandate, the common name, will be discharged from this point on. Why? including past, present and future ones that are created. Okay, why? As we the people refuse to partake, and it's what Dave, Trust you Dave were talking about individually, refuse to partake in any, fur uh, any further in a possible fraud or possible frauds. That's the idea behind the preamble, the accounting, the accounting um, and the audit is we believe a fraud has taken place. Given the 90 days, we serve the mandate. If they still ignore us, everyone who's got the name will have a notification. If anyone comes to your house, what we're going to do is we're going to send this document to every single police station, Scotland Yard, England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, and tell them now, we'll show them the preamble, because they'll have got one, we'll show them the mandate, and we will now refuse to part with another penny, and they have now got um, an obligation of duty as public servants to now investigate a possible fraud. <coughs> and the fraud is what the Crown have perpetrated with the name, the enemy, that we've been unwittingly engaging in. Now we refuse now, we refuse to... Um, take part in a, that we now have got new information that we're partaking in fraud and we refuse to do it. So hopefully we'll be protected if we've got a million people. Um, this document, this is the end now, uh, this document can be produced and shown to any officer agent acting on behalf of any of the pre-served bodies, he or she must leave you alone if they're public servants, as they will be causing you harm which is a crime. He or she must leave you alone until a full investigation into a possible fraud or frauds has been conducted. Um, and this is a quote, this is it now, we've just about finished, two minutes and we've done. Um, the primary function of any civilization or society, and this is the real core of the mandate, uh, the primary function of any civilization or society is for the majority to protect the rights of the minority, and the smallest minority is the individual. So the majority cannot um, vote away the basic rights and freedoms of the individual. In other words, um, uh, an individual who's had um, his basic fundamental freedoms and rights taken away is just as important as the rest of them. That's what that's saying. Um, and then cheesy, I wanted to finish on a cheesy line, I thought this is brilliant. Oh, my arm's aching, my mind's got heavy actually. <laughs> I decided to start training on weights, I haven't done it for six years. I you know that so honest you get? I can't flip you move. Oh, right, so finally, um, say this cheesy line to yourself, uh, at least once a day, no thing is impossible because I'm possible. All impossible is, really, is I'm possible. All impossible is, is I'm possible. And what I'm, what I'm trying to say about that is, there's the link for chicomashradio.co.uk and, and the People's Mandate website. So what I'm trying to say is, nothing's impossible um, because I'm possible and you're possible. And what I'm trying to say is, two seconds, it's gone, we're, we're finished now, is that the power, as we know now, lies with us. Um, the only reason we haven't done it so far is that we're picked off individually and we're frightened, it's fear. We let go of the fear. If, if a thousand people stand with you, that fear tends to dwindle a little bit, doesn't it? If ten thousand people stand with you, then it starts to be more confident. What if there's a million, minimum, a million people now? And this goes to anybody, you don't have to be awake to put your name on the mandate. If you're, <coughs> excuse me, one more minute and we'll close. Uh, if you're not awake and I approach somebody on the street and I, I say, are you happy how things are going? Oh no. Oh, what's wrong? Well, I pay too much tax. Just on the mandate. Let's have it looked into. 
I can't afford my council tax, I can't afford my TV lights. Stick your name on the Monday. I'll have my children taken away, stick your name on the Monday. Can you see where I'm going with it? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, there's nobody in England, Scotland, Ireland or Wales or anywhere else that hasn't got a possible gripe or they feel like they've been hard done to. You name me somebody that, that hasn't been hard done to and all they've got to do is stick a common name with a geographical landmass. And the more and more people, what if we get one million, five million, what if we get ten million, what if we get nearly everybody in England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales? How long can they ignore it? So thanks ever so much for coming this week. Cheers. And I still want to smug you all. Cheers, thanks.